Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. How are you guys doing? I hope all of you guys are doing all right. Aid Mubarak to all of you. This is just a follow up, really, on the video that I done on Abdul Rahman Hassan, Ustad Abdul Rahman Hassan, on the footballing incident. And a lot of brothers have come to me and said, Why don't you speak to him privately? You know, you've had him on the podcast before, you, you've got some kind of relationship with him. Why don't you speak to him privately? The truth of the matter is, ever since I well, I'm not saying this was the exact point of demarcation, but I'll be honest with you guys. Ever since I asked him to come and speak about the Kalam issue, the philosophy issue, which he said that, you know, he had his views on philosophy and we responded to it, for those who know. Um, he didn't, like, I wasn't able to communicate with him privately, let's just put it that way. Even if I had uh, spoken to people that we are mutual friends and so on, or people that he knows and I know and so on. So I've, I've just not been able to do it. So if... He opens up a pathway of private communication then potentially these kinds of uh, public expositions will be less relevant or needed but more importantly that the modus operandi if you like or the way of operating for for them and, and quite frankly for for us as well uh, for, for a lot of the time has been that if you say something publicly which is academically incorrect then quite frankly it's the the rights of the people the public audience to to have that correctly to correct it Corre corrected publicly as well um, and so I just want to put out there that I don't really have any hard feelings or anything like that towards Abdul Rahman Hassan it's just I don't have a pathway to private communication with him if I did have that pathway I think it potentially would have um, maybe uh, been a different situation altogether having said that now I, I wanted to kind of uh, why did I make a big deal out of this why did I make a video about this in the first place the reason why is because as I say I think this issue it causes it's a slippery slope situation and I deal with youth in this country and in the West and in other parts of the world all the time. And I can tell you something, we as youth living in the West have very limited outlets ourselves. We have martial arts, we have sports, we have only very limited outlets. Now when someone of some kind of authority, and even if, if it's pseudo authority with all due respect to him, but if, even if it's some kind of authority um, who seemingly is someone who has learned the religion of Islam and is speaking on behalf of it comes out and tells people you know that football is I mean this is what he, he was saying it's actually worse than the major sins and before I continue I do want you to see that video because I think it's actually shocking it is actually shocking when you think about this when the people see this or young people see this they, they feel entrapped they feel claustrophobic so I want to I want to look at this video and come back Podcast we did, yeah. Yeah, we've done a podcast on it. The forms that it can become Kufr Akbar. But what's the bare minimum that he is? It's Kufr Asghar. It's Kufr Asghar. It's higher than Al Kabir Kabair. Major sins. So, where the man made. As you guys have seen there, bro, uh, guys, honestly, to be honest with you, this is. Ana Azum, I am making the claim today that this is not only a Hata. This is not only a mistake. This is actually incorrect teaching of Aqidah. And this is their bread and butter, okay? Abdurrahman Hassan, listen to me carefully. I know you're watching this. 100% you're watching this, okay? I know you don't speak to me privately, no problem. I'm, I'm extending my hand. We can have very fruitful conversations, as we have in the past, privately. Um, but this kind of rhetoric here, Abdurrahman Hassan, is, I'm going to tell you very clearly. It's absolutely problematic, okay? And I respect you as a man. I respect you as a person of knowledge. You've you've studied, you spent so much time of your life studying, but you've you've totally missed the mark here. And I'll tell you why. When you say that it's worse than the major sins, this is to say that the entailments of football, the entailments of playing football, managing football, overseeing a football match, uh, allowing it, any of that kind of thing, the entailments, not the thing itself. Is worse than killing somebody. Let that sink in for a second. Is it worse than killing somebody? Is it worse than a man committing zina when he's married or a woman committing zina when she's married? The entailments of football on this worldview is worse than, sorry to say, had one, someone's wife gone and cheated on him with his friend or something like that. This is what we, you are, this is the hierarchization of sins that you want us to kind of uh, understand. Now, I'm not saying shirk isn't worse than all those things. Of course, shirk is. Of course, shirk is. We are saying this is not shirk. And you and you telling the people that this is a kind of shirk, a kind of uh, a kufr asghar, because it's al-hukm ghair ma anzal Allah. It's a form of kufr. It's a distortion of the religion of Islam. You're, you're mocking 
you are, I'm not going to use the word mocking. I take that back. I strike that from the record. You are trivializing, okay, number one, the major sins, and you are mis misapplying what it is to do kufr and shirk, even in, the, even in the minor forms. And we must be clear. He's not saying it's kufr akbar or shirk akbar. He's not saying that. He's not saying someone who plays football is a disbeliever. Yet he is saying it's worse than the major sins. I find it so problematic. The reason why it's wrong, what you're saying, it's not even ishtihad, and we're not going to accept this. And how could there be ishtihad on something which is aqaidi anyways, like this? If something is creedal, why do we need to do ishtihad on it? It should be so clear for the people to see. Okay? The reason why it's not ishtihad, and this is not acceptable, is simply because al hukm bi ghayri ma anzal Allah, that yaqtadi, it entails a substitution replacement. Yaqtadi entails ta'arud bin al ahkam. That somehow the referee, or whatever it may be, is at, is against a hukm and ahkam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are preferring this hukm over the hukm of Allah. Otherwise, let me give you a scenario. And I'll make, I'll make this very simple. You, you teach classes, right? Abdurrahman Hassan. And say, for example, there's someone in your class, and you're in a Muslim country, there two people have a fight. Two people have a physical fight. And one person breaks the bone of the other person. You say both of you are suspended from my class. Okay? Which is the equivalent of a red card. Are you doing al-hukm bi ghayr ma anzal Allah? No, you're not. Because you're not saying this suspension is a replacement for the had. And the analogy is perfect. And there's no difference between the two things. It only becomes al-hukm bi ghayr ma anzal Allah when it's a substitution or replacement and the person prefers it. Do you understand? If the person prefers it to the hukum that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down. This is such an error of judgment that you can't just, I'm kind of, I'm really sorry, but you can't just scurry away and think, oh, well, it's a matter of ishtihad. We're not going to mention it. We're not going to talk about it. We're not going to retract anything. And we're just going to move away. This needs to be retracted. Because with this, you are confusing young people and something which should be the bread and butter, which is your aqidah, is absolutely wrong. So all that is acceptable at this point to save kind of, not your public reputation, to save or anything like that. It's, it's just to save the academic amana, you know, that you've, you've distorted here is a retraction. Say this, I've taught this wrong. Come to the conclusion, I was wrong about this. And there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with being wrong. I mean, we're all wrong, wallahi. One more thing I want to add. Recently, he said something to the effect of we shouldn't be talking. He talked about the intellect. In a manner that was like we, we, when the Quran, the Sunnah, and the Salaf, we kind of leave the intellect. When you're applying ahkam, you need two things. You need ilm and faham. That's why the Quran says, فَفَهَمْنَاهَا Sulaiman. We gave Sulaiman understanding of it. Ilm and faham are two different things. And what I'm saying is, with all due respect, right? If, if you're misapplying ahkam, which are basic for even lay audiences to be able to see and reason, then imagine when it comes to Masail of Tabdiya and Takfir. Like imagine now, the Ummah has to uh, rely on your judgment to do tabdi'a on person X or person Y or person Z. If you are making such blunders on, or on issues of football or something like that, when, what about when you're making tabdi'a of this person or making ahkam ta'ayuniya on person X or person Y or person Z? Now tell me, let's be honest, to what extent do you think people will take your fahm, your understanding seriously? And to what extent do you expect us to? Why should we, if this is how you're misapplying things, for the lay audiences to see? I think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this very clear. And he's made the lay audiences kind of exposed to this. To, re to let people see that your fahm and tabiq, fahm tabiqi, or applied fahm of the ahkam of Islam, is actually not on point, And it does require treatment. Now, I don't think it's arrogant for me to say to you, look, we've been working with people, mashayikh and ulama and so on for a very long time. And my, uh, you know, offer to you is that we have fruitful discussions in private and that we can we can help you with critically thinking so that it can help you with tatbiq al-ahkam. It will help you sharpen the mind. So, oh, this applies, this doesn't apply, this is a contradiction, this is not a contradiction. Um, these kinds of things. I, I genuinely think, oh, Allahi, and I put this offer to you and to people like you, okay? Just put your, just come reach out to me and I will take my time out. We talk, you can teach me something because there's a lot to learn from me, brother. A lot to learn. And I'll tell you a few things and that will be it. But please, 
you know, retract this this disgusting, I mean, sorry, not I'm not going to use strong words, this abominable, no, this is a strong word, this uh, uh, off the mark fatwa, please retract, retract it for the sake of the youth who need an outlet, Salafi youth in this country and other types of youth who listen to you, please don't make life difficult for them and start, you know, appreciating the, the nuances of the Ummah.